Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we got ourselves another child's toy. Well, in continuing with our children's toy series, uh, specifically our construction series, where we've already done a flatbed truck and a skid steer, today we're going to be making a steamroller. And it all starts with the front roller with a piece of inch and a half diameter dowel. Well, there is enough pieces in this pattern that it takes up not one sheet, but in this case, it takes up two sheets. And what we're going to do is, just like I said, we need to start with the roller with an inch and a half diameter dowel. Um, now, I didn't have any dowel, so I ended up turning mine out of a, a scrap chunk of mahogany. But it's an inch and a half in diameter. It's one and three quarter inches long, and I've drilled a quarter inch hole right through the middle. That will form your roller wheel. And just like this section of the pattern says, you're going to need three pieces of dowel, quarter inch diameter all. Uh, one will be two and five eighths of an inch long. One will be two inches long and the other will be inch and a quarter long. For now, we just need the two and five eighths inch length and we can just sit it in our roller wheel or our inch and a half dowel. Well, now the next piece that we want to make to go along with our roller wheel is going to be the bracket that holds it. Um, so for this, we're going to need a piece of half inch thick material. What you can do is cut it to its width before you attach the pattern. And then all you'll need to do is cut the interior here and this back section. Um, it's a lot easier to do it that way. I would also just mark this 5 16 diameter hole on the side um, and then drill those on both sides, being careful that they line up because those will be the axle holes for your roller. So let me get this piece cut and drilled and I'll show you what we end up with. And with our pattern attached and the 9 32nd diameter hole drilled here, as well as our two 5 16 diameter holes drilled, we can cut this out at the scroll saw. Now, these side little angle pieces right here, that can easily be done over at the belt sander or even sanding by hand once you get the main shape cut out. Well, the next piece that you want to make will be the front roller guard, and it's just a 1 8 inch thick piece of whatever stock you're using. You can follow the size here on the pattern just for interest sake these patterns are drawn out in one to one scale so if there's ever a dimension that's missing or you're never or you're there's ever a point in time that you're not sure measure from the drawing because it's one to one scale what you see is what you get so we now need to glue this section together so all we're going to do is place our roller wheel in here, place our two and five eighths inch long quarter inch dowel like that. We will glue it into our wheel once we get it situated in there. And this front guard piece will get glued right here on the front. Now, don't worry if it overhangs a little bit, you can sand that off and uh, finish it and fine tune it afterwards. But let's get this glued together. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to dry, we are going to work on this piece, which is our roller cover body. Um, it's going to start off with our center core piece. I'm not sure what to tell you about this, but what you're going to need is a piece of three quarter inch thick material. So I've glued the pattern onto a thin piece of hardboard because we want to make a template. So for now, all I want to do is take it over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut the inside edge only. You can leave the rest alone because the only profile we need is that inside edge. Once you get that cut, you should end up with something that looks like this. So what I have is a piece of three quarter inch thick material here. Um, it's one and an eighth 
wide and I believe it's one and seven eighths of an inch long. This is the end profile. Um, so what we want to do is line up our template here with the side of our board or the side of our piece and we're going to trace that profile onto our pre-cut block of wood just like that. Now what I'm going to do, there's lots of ways you could cut this. You could cut it at the scroll saw, you could cut it at the band saw. I'm not messing with any of those. I'm just going to take it over to my oscillating drum sander and sand this away until it's the profile that I want. Now with that profile shaped, uh, we can now move on with the sides of our cover. And I've got a couple pieces of quarter inch thick poplar here. It is three quarters of an inch wide, one and an eighth inch long. And that is basically the maximum dimensions of this piece here. So all we're going to do is on our core here, we're going to glue these side pieces on, lining up our front edge. And then let that comp completely set up. So to finish off this cover, I have cut a little template and this template is the side profile of our cover. And I have traced this profile onto our glued up blank here. And I'm just going to take it over to the belt sander and very carefully sand that off. And uh, that will finish off our cover for our roller. And then all that's left to do is to glue it in place right at the back of this assembly, just like that. And that will finish off our roller. All right, so with that now, we can move on to the engine and the main body of this uh, steamroller. Well, the main body of this toy is put together in sections and they all fit together kind of like a puzzle. Um, there is a sequence that you need to do in order to make this work. So what I have is I have four pieces of quarter inch thick material here. They are an inch and a quarter high or wide and what are they? They are two and three quarters long. Now I also have our patterns for our two side sections and I have made templates for those. I also have a piece of three quarter inch thick uh, poplar that is the same dimensions as this, two and three quarters by one and a quarter and I have attached our pattern for the main body core to this. We're going to put this aside for just a minute and turn our attention to our fenders or our quarter inch thick pieces. So we're going to want two of these pieces of poplar and using our template, we will just draw out our steps and our steps are these little small interior cuts here. So on two of our pieces, we are going to draw those out. Okay, and then on our other two pieces, we will line up our back flat edge here and we will cut, or sorry, we will mark out just the outside edge of the fender. Just this one, not the wheel well, just the fender. And we'll do that on two pieces. All right, and at this point now, we can take these four pieces over to the scroll saw and we will cut them out. Okay, so the assembly of these now is you will make two of them, just like this. The back flat edges will line up and you will make a left and a right so that we end up with fenders like that. And we can glue these together, lining up the bottom and the back edges. And once they're dry, we can move on. Before you glue them together on the outside edges of these fender pieces, you may want to just round over this just a little bit, just soften that edge just a touch. 
Uh, so get that done, glue these together, and uh, while we're waiting for that, we can move on with this piece. And what we want to do, now it doesn't show it very well in the drawing, but what we have here is a quarter inch stopped hole. That will be centered on the three quarter inch thickness. So we can drill this quarter inch diameter hole and we can also drill this 5 16th diameter hole and take it over to the scroll saw and cut out this center section right here once your holes are drilled. Now with these fender sections all dried up, we can now use our template, line up the back edge and we will trace out the inner cut of our wheel well and then we can take it over to the scroll saw and cut it out. Um, the reason we don't cut it out before this is all glued together and dried is it just gives better results. You don't have to worry about cutting it perfectly and aligning things because you're cutting them both at the same time now. And now with both of those cut, we can line them up with our core, line them up with the back edge, making sure to put the left and the right, and we can glue them in place. Once you get it glued together, let it completely dry. And once you get it dry, you can take it over to the belt sander and we can just clean it up if some of the edges don't line up perfectly on the back uh, or the front. Any of the top edges that don't line up, we can clean that up with sandpaper mounted to three quarter inch thick MDF. Same thing with the bottom. I've rounded off this back edge just a little bit as well as these back corners. Uh, again, with a child's toy, you don't want the sharp edges. So just give them a sanding, you know, take off any of those crisp, sharp edges so that the kids aren't cutting themselves on these toys. Uh, wooden toys are fun and all of that jazz, but they're suddenly not so fun when you get cut by one. So there you go. That is the back body of our steamroller. That's awesome. Check that out. Well, much like a lot of the other components of this build, the cab or the cabin of this steamroller is made in layers. And this is the center core, which includes the seat. You just want to put the pattern onto a piece of three quarter inch thick material and cut it out over the scroll saw. And now with the core done, I've made a template of our side panels. And all I've done is drawn it out here on some quarter inch thick poplar. I'm gonna cut these out of the scroll saw and then we can glue them together onto our core. So when gluing these onto the core, just remember that the steeper slope is the front. So just make sure that you have your core aligned properly. So we'll just put a little bead of glue there and we will glue these together and let them set up. And once it's dry, we can cut and glue in place the roof of the cab. And it's nothing but a uh, 1 8 thick piece of stock and you could follow the dimensions on the plans and just line it up centered. and glue it in place. And now with the cab dry, we can glue it onto our steamroller. And it just gets glued something like that, very close to the front edge, centered side to side, just like that. So glue that in place and let it set up. Well, the next two pieces form the toolbox that will sit on the back section of the steamroller here. And it's just two pieces of stock. I've used contrasting colors, but you don't have to. It just kind of defines the lid. Um, one is one quarter inch thick, one is one eighth of an inch thick, and they're both half inch wide and one inch long. 
Now, if you don't have contrasting stock to differentiate between the lid and the box, what you can do is on the corners here of the uh, mating surfaces, just give them a very light sanding. And then when you glue the two pieces together, there will be a definitive line between them that will show that there's a lid in a box. So we can glue those together, let them set up, give them a good sanding, and then they will get glued right here behind the cab of our steamroller. All right, so we have both of our pieces now. We have our rear section or our engine and we have our roller that's in the front. It's now time to join them together. And if you remember, we drilled that quarter inch hole in the bottom. And if you follow the plans, you've got yourself an inch and a quarter long dowel. So all you need to do is slide this inside, take your dowel, push it up, through the roller assembly and up into the body at the top. And at this point, you just wanna make sure that things are gonna move properly and that sort of thing. And as long as you're happy with it, now you can glue this in place. Um, you just wanna be careful of squeeze out here, guys. You don't want to have this so that it glues it into um, in, into your roller mechanism so that it won't steer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in here and put a little drop of glue inside the hole at the top. Like that. And I will sit my roller assembly in place here place this dowel through, but just before it reaches the bottom, I'll place a little bit of glue here on this end. And we'll spin that in place. And then of course, we'll clean up any squeeze out that there might be. And once it's dry and you're happy with it, you can cut that dowel or sand that dowel flush so that it's not sticking out like that. And now the last component to make for this, if you want to call them components, are the rear wheels. And they are basically one inch diameter circles. They are cut from half inch stock and they will get glued together on a two inch long piece of quarter inch dowel through that 5 16 hole that we drilled at the back and they will get glued in place with about like approximately one eighth of an inch of the dowel protruding out from the wheels just like that now these wheels were just cut over at the scroll saw um, you can use a hole saw you can you know turn them on the lathe, whatever you want. These ones were cut on the scroll saw and then sand it uh, over at the lathe to make them perfectly round and uniform. So it's up to you how you want to do that. So either way, we're gonna get these wheels glued in place. We're gonna cut off that uh, joining pin between our roller assembly and our engine or cab. And that, boys and girls, is all she wrote for this one. And there you have it, a toy steamroller. Guys, once again, I can't stress enough how much fun these things are to make. Um, and the joy that the kids get out of them makes it all worthwhile. This one took me a little longer than, I, uh, than it took me to make the other ones, but this one had many more layers. It also took a lot longer to design with the outer fenders than the next wall and the core. Trying to figure out how I wanted that roller mechanism to connect to the body of the toy. Um, it all came together in the end, but what a process. It really took some time to do, but it was well worth it. This thing looks awesome. I love the articulation in the front where you've got that little bit of steering. You don't want a lot in a steamroller because that's not what they do. They don't do hard turns. They barely do little tiny degree uh, 
adjustments in their steering, we'll call it. So this thing is actually pretty right on the money as far as what the real ones are like. Um, you have to remember, it is what it is. It's a toy. So don't get all hung up on the details. And guys, if you don't have a scroll saw and you, you don't think you can cut out those stairs that, you know, allow the driver to climb in, then don't cut them. Um, there are many ways to do this. If your way of cutting this is with a bandsaw, then don't add the steps if you don't want, or maybe cut them with a fret saw by hand as an interior cut. Either way, it's a load of fun. Now, this video is not like my normal video where I show almost every process. The reason being, we've done enough of these. It's um, This one was more about the sequence of how to put this thing together with the roller and the shaping of the roller guard and uh, the cab with the core and the walls and the roof and the five layers that make up the body of this thing. So it was more about the process that goes along with the plans that I drew out rather than showing you each individual step. So hopefully you guys are going to be able to uh, put this together, but if not, get back to the other toy videos, reference them and see how things are done because the process on this one is exactly the same. The only thing that changes was the sequence of assembly. So whether you like the shorter one or not, or, I don't know. You gotta make one of these things. These things are awesome. <laughs> Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in today. This one's been a lot of fun. I have to say that this is one of my favorite toys that I've designed. It's a little more involved than some of the earlier ones we've done, but the results are spectacular. They really are, and I, it's, it's time well spent, guys. As always with these toys, uh, I love making them. I really do. I love designing them, but I love to share them as well. So drop me a line over at the channel's Facebook page. Send me an email at a cutabove underscore woodworking at hotmail.com. I would love to send a copy of this PDF your way so that you can make your, uh, your, your children in your life make them some of these toys as well. If you haven't already, guys, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click the bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Um, guys, one last thing I want to touch on here. If this toy is too small for you and you want something bigger, just photocopy the PDF a little larger. That's all you got to do. Nothing wrong with that. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you're going to try this one for yourself, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. And more importantly, I honestly hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.